So what we've got here is one of the robots you have. You have quite a few of these. Yeah. Um, and we were saying earlier on, a bit of a blank canvas. This could do anything that you ask it to in time. How do you go about getting it to do anything? Uh, basically, we have a, a UI where the robots are allowed to uh, perform tasks based on the user's input. So, for example, uh, if we would like, we can ask the robots to go to a different location to, to assist us. So you have a simple UI. The idea is, is that this UI will be meaningful for, for our user, especially those that doesn't have any technical background. So for example, you, have, you see here you have very simple uh, explanation here. You can change certain information. You can personalize the robot's behavior so that it can uh, express uh, feedbacks in a way that making sense for you. You can use the command interface uh, to drive the robots or to ask the robots to go to certain location to help you transport objects. When you click on transport objects, then it shows you where do you want to transport that objects to. So it, everything is very uh, simple and guided way. Uh, and then you can also visualize your interaction history. So one of these particular uh, behavior that I want to show you that, that is quite important for this project is called personalized behavior. The idea for having a personalized behavior is so that the robots can provide feedback without the user having to you know, look into the screen. So if the robot is uh, busy performing a task, then it will run around with a blinking embers on, on, the, on, on the shoulder. What you're talking about here basically is if you're living with someone, yeah. you get to know them and you realize when they might be busy or when they're stressed or when you need to sort of avoid them or give them some space. This is what you're teaching the robot yeah. to communicate. Yeah. It's very similar to, you know, when you have a, a child in, your, in the house. Sometimes, even though they're playing in, in their own uh, uh, environments and you're watching TV, occasionally you still want to make sure, you know, try to investigate what they are doing. So similarly, for, for a robotic system like this, people that own the system want to know what actually the system is doing because there's no way of, of trying to relate the system to, to other living beings. So one way of doing that is to allow the robots to express things like using signals like when it's busy, it's blinking, the, the shoulder in amber color, so the, the user know that, okay, actually the, the robot is busy performing a task. And then these do, do not provide an event such as you don't understand what the system is doing, why the robot is not responding to me, and then you end up getting frustrated and stop using the system. I suppose what's unique, though, about these robots, you were telling me a little earlier on that unlike in our life, we meet people, we get used to each person, we have to adapt to them. Once you get used to this robot, you say that you can be used to all of them because that sort of personality or profile you can find in, yeah. in any kind of other body. I mean, explain that. It all yeah. sounds a bit complicated. One of the main uh, important things about this project is creating a character. This character what we also call a personality of a system. The idea is to have this personality that a uh, user that, that using this system can relate to and, and can spend time and building this uh, rela understanding relationship. So the, the idea is, is for this character is not just to stay with one robot bodies because uh, obviously you have different types of system that can perform different tasks. And once you have this assistant, you might want to bring them to different uh, locations to help you as well. So the idea is, is to have this character that, that can migrate between different robot body. So very similar to how human beings use different cars to perform, uh, or different vehicles to perform different tasks, the, the, the character will use different robot bodies to perform different tasks. So for example, for the small sunflower robots here, it's mainly used to uh, remind users about uh, events that are happening in, in their home environment. It's less intrusive because it's smaller and it can be hiding behind a sofa and so on. And then over there you see we have a, a, a care robots which basically a bigger system about 1.57 uh, meters tall and it have a great arm. The idea is to the character can move into that system and then use its arm to fetch objects for the user. So uh, one of the most interesting thing is then you, you want these understandings between the user and the character, then when the character migrate to different robot body, the user do not need to relearn how to interact with that system. They have this uh, standardized uh, way of interacting with this, with this agent and it's bringing replicate in different embodiments.